Hello you lot, Miller Connor here, welcome back once again and welcome today to what might well be the most important episode yet of living with a modern car. Because when I did that video late last year complaining about modern cars and why I don't like them so much, one of the main criticisms I had for them was that they're idiot proof. They use a lot of systems that will take over and do everything for you because they think you're too stupid to be able to drive a car. And that, mostly with this Punto Twin Air, is with fuel economy. Because on paper, this car has got a very, very high claimed fuel economy figure. On the combined cycle, this is in UK miles per gallon, the Fiat Punto Twin Air is rated officially at 67 miles to the gallon. That means that in theory, this car is doing around about 50% more fuel economy, more miles to the gallon than the Seicento does. That is an enormous rate of progress, and if the Punto really can do that, that is stupendous. To help you achieve that, modern cars like the Punto do have a lot of features to help you get the most amount of fuel efficiency possible. As well as the twin air engine this has got, the 875cc two-cylinder turbo engine, it makes the most fuel efficiency possible by having the smallest capacity possible. It's also got six gears, which in a car with just a 0.8 litre engine is ridiculous, frankly. Then there's the stop start. I've had it turned off ever since I bought this car because I hate the idea of the car turning itself off without me asking it to, then having to restart when the light goes green, and also inadvertently and very, very quickly wearing out starter motors. And frankly, as we've seen by how expensive it is to maintain a modern car, I don't want to be replacing a starter motor. The whole idea behind stop start, it was pioneered a few years ago, is that it will turn the engine off when you come to a set of traffic lights. When you stop, it will turn the engine off so you're not using the fuel pointless when you're idling. But also, this car's got another trick up its sleeve, and that, as I've hinted at before, is the eco mode setting. And what eco mode does, from my driving experience, when you're driving along, there's a definite drop in power, torque, responsiveness, and supposedly a big increase in your fuel economy. We've got a lot of things on our side to help us get the best fuel efficiency possible out of this little car. The question is, can we do it? Can we match Fiat's 67 miles to the gallon claimed figure for this car? Well, I'm gonna find out because I'm gonna go and do the exact same run that I did for the Super Seicento in that fuel economy challenge video. And if you wanna know how to save more fuel when you're driving, go and check that out because there's a lot of handy tips if you don't wanna put so much money into your fuel bill every month. Can this car really do 67 miles to the gallon? Are modern cars that much more fuel efficient than older ones? Is all that technology that's there to help you with your fuel efficiency really, actually, honestly doing that much? The first stage on this epic quest for fuel economy is to put some fuel in, because obviously I need something to measure it off of when the tank was empty and distance and stuff like that. So you're gonna join me in the petrol station filling up now. You join me in a petrol station. I've got petrol. I'm gonna fire up my second GoPro because I'm very high tech on this channel. And what we're gonna do now is go into the trip computer. It resets the trip, it resets the average MPGs. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to leave the stop start on, eco mode is on, average MPG is at zero. We're gonna do the exact same route as before. In the little instrument cluster here, in my little screen, I've also got something that a lot of modern cars have in an effort to try and save fuel, and that is a change gear light. So this car will tell me when to change gear for the most fuel efficiency. A lot of modern cars, they wanna tell you how to change gear and they wanna tell you when to change gear because if it's not gonna be an automatic so they can do it for you, they're gonna make sure that they are gonna tell you how to do it with the most fuel efficiency. So my plan is, I'm gonna be a complete slave to the machine in this. I'm gonna allow it to stop start for me. I'm gonna allow it to be in eco mode. I'm gonna allow it to tell me when to change gear and I'm gonna pay attention to when it tells me to change gear. I'm leaving a little poll on the video now. I wanna know roughly what you think it's gonna do. So I've gotta just drive along now with my eyes glaring at my rev counter and at my little trip computer thing telling me, there we go, shift, I've gotta shift and that was at less than 3,000 RPM, it was telling me to change there, so I'm gonna shift, there we go, that's into fourth, so I'm immediately, I basically went third, fourth, I have to obey the machine here, and just go with it. Apparently, we're doing 53.6 to the gallon. That's still 14 off the claimed figure so far, but that number is going up already, it's 57 miles to the gallon now, 
This is genuinely quite stressful. I'm currently sitting idling with the engine running. Now, I'm not gonna force it to do that. I'm not gonna turn the engine off and back on myself because that's not automated. That's not the machine doing it for you. Turning it off yourself and turning it back on again, that's what you do in an old-fashioned car. This is a modern car, it's very high-tech, so I'm gonna leave the computers to do their thing to work out when to turn the engine off for me and how to get me the best fuel economy. So this isn't helping my fuel economy because at the moment it's kind of stop-starty. We kind of, this truck is accelerating then braking, accelerating, then braking, his fuel economy is going to be terrible and unfortunately it's not helping mine either because I can't actually kind of get up to a speed and maintain it. As I said before, when you want fuel efficiency you want to get up to a speed and hold it because that's where you're consistent, you're not braking which isn't scrubbing off speed pointlessly. This is this is genuinely intense, like you tend to relax when driving through town for the most part if you know the area, you know the car. When you're fuel economy driving it's blooming stressful because you're trying to work out how late can I leave that to break and no, I am going to have to break. Another thing that could be a little bit harmful towards our results is this traffic light I'm at now and indeed the roadworks I just went through, they weren't there when I did this in the Seicento. Could be corrupting our results a little bit I suppose but on the whole if you've got an eco-friendly car with all this technology it should be able to make up for that. I'm not expecting it to match its fuel economy figure what I want to know is what it will actually do. Join me when I'm on the move again and getting onto some wider, more open, slightly faster roads where hopefully this car should really get into its fuel economy stride. But it's going to be a while while I look at things, so join me then. You may have noticed I've sprouted a pair of sunglasses and that's because it's very sunny and frankly I can't really see properly without them on. We are now coming on to a very very fast road that we did when we did the economy run in the Seicento. This is a 60 mile an hour single track road and before I even got to 45 the car was telling me to go into 6th. So that gives you some idea of how keen it is to get you into a top gear and get you being fuel efficient. So I'm going to sit here now where I can where possible with the flow of the traffic at exactly 60 miles an hour. I'm already in 6th gear. We're doing around just under two and a half thousand rpm there and feeling good actually when i said on the long distance trip this car feels at home doing big trips at high speed i wasn't lying this is an effortless car to drive long distance this engine's got a lot of compliments and this car is a good car the punto is just a good car with an excellent engine the combination should make for some very very good fuel economy figures but will they Let's find out. I'm going to find out, let this car flex its fuel economy muscles and show me what it's got. We're currently... Oh, uh, there's someone on a 60 mile an hour road on a moped. That is sacrilege. What are you doing? You can probably hear it. So in eco mode, it does still have some power, but it's very, very lazy to come on. It's... It's a bit dormant, shall we say, in eco. I've had the power delivery of this engine described by people online as being like a diesel, where you've got not much, not much, not much, not much, quite a lot, and then it tails off. And to be honest, I actually agree with that. For a petrol engine, the power delivery and the torque delivery of this is a lot like a diesel. And the fuel economy, as we stand on the trip computer right now, is 53.6, it's just jumped up a little bit. You've still got 14 MPGs more to gain, computer, but the thing is, when we were idling at the traffic lights for the Roebox and what have you, that average economy was going down, even though I wasn't actually going anywhere, and that's not going to use any fuel worth a damn with an engine this small. So I think that gauge is a bit melodramatic, to be honest. So as much as we are going to take what that says, as an example, I'm going to look at it at the end, I still want to do my own calculations, and that is proof you shouldn't always rely on these gauges. Can we get 67? Let's find out. So we're pretty much now at the end of our high speed, 60 mile an hour, 6th gear, giving this engine the best chance it's got bit. And now we're going on to the tiny little twisty country B road bit, where, let's be fair, this is where the car might struggle. Because when you're doing small speed and you're braking a lot, that's the worst for fuel economy. So what I'm going to do is settle into the groove like we did in the Seicento, I'm not going to hoon it, mostly because this is a stock car on very skinny eco tyres, but also because we're all about that eco today. We've got our eco mode on, I've got everything turned off even though it's quite warm today, so I'm actually slowly baking to death, but all for the world's benefit, for your benefit, and I'm just going to cruise along and use minimal fuel that is possible. And again, I am going to brake when I need to brake, obviously like when you've got a very tight corner going on, but I'm not going to change down unless the car tells me to, because if I didn't know 
anything about cars and I was just driving this trying to get the most fuel economy, that's what I'd be doing. That's all I'd have to rely on. So that's all I'm going to rely on here is when the mighty Punto's brain tells me to change up, apparently. 35 and we're going fifth gear. All right, okay, that's some torque. I will say this much for this engine, even in eco mode, it's got some torque, it's got some pulling power. It's actually a really, really good little engine. and I'm loving the noise it makes and I like the torque it's got and I like out of eco how much pull it's got as well because it is genuinely quite a gutsy engine considering that this thing is around 1100 kilos and it's only rocking 84 horsepower. It's got some pull, it's not bad at all. But the real question is, what's it gonna do fuel economy wise? Because as we said before, on your twisty country roads, this is where you really struggle because your accelerate brake, accelerate brake, accelerate brake, turn into a corner, change down, accelerate brake, kind of fluctuating between 30 and 40 miles an hour on this road, which is what I did in the Sagento. I really am giving this car the best chance it's got here. I'm letting it use all its eco technology. I've got eco-friendly Kumo eco wing tires on it. I'm driving like I respect mother nature, like I want the world to live a bit longer. What could possibly go wrong? Hello, petrol station. Give me your golden elixir of power and fun. Unless you drive something boring, in which case, give me your petrol. Parked up next to a Corsa. I'll leave my feelings on those here. And now, let's fill up. Do it. Don't pretend you don't do it. You joined me post fuel fill up where I put in 3.62 litres of fuel. And if I just check my trip meter, 31.5 miles covered. For those of you that didn't watch the last video, the way to calculate your miles per gallon is you start with your number of literage, which was 3.62, and you divide that by 4.54, and that gives you your gallons, which in this case is 0.797. So now we need our mileage, and the way to do it is, so we do 31.5 divided by 0.797. We're about to get our fuel economy figure, so I'm gonna click over on here, and first of all, let's see what the car thinks it's done, shall we? So over that distance, the car thinks it's done 53.3 miles to the gallon. And now we can run the maths and work out what fuel economy this car actually did on the combined cycle, the same one that we did for the Sicento. Let's do it. Oh, oh dear, oh dear. Quite a lot less, ladies and gentlemen. 39.5, I don't know if you can see that there, 39.5 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle. Let's be absolutely fair to this car. We did sit in traffic. Let's be fair and ignore that moped as well. Let's add 10% to that because even if we did that times 1.1, we're still only looking at 43.5 miles to the gallon. Well, when you think the Sicento has got a bigger engine, 1242cc as opposed to 875, we've got twice as many cylinders, I haven't got all the eco technology in like this has of the stop start, of the eco mode, of the sixth gear, of the fuel saving tyres, any of that stuff, or all the aerodynamic advancements for fuel efficiency that have obviously happened in the sort of 10, 15 years since these two cars come out, even with a 10% allowance for the like mishaps we had along the way for the Punto, we're still only around two and a half miles to the gallon better off. And incidentally, the trip computer seems to think that we did a full 10 MPG more than what we actually did. It's worth bearing in mind the Sicento has got a tuned engine in it as well. It's got a hotter 866 cam. It's got a much bigger 43 millimeter ported throttle body. It's got a performance exhaust. It's got a high flowing cat. And even though I did drive it gingerly, it doesn't have all the eco technology like the stop start, like the eco mode, like the sixth gear, like the fuel saving tires that the Punto has. This should have crushed the Sicento there and it should indeed crush any car of a similar vintage. Modern cars, more economical? Myth busted. Ladies and gentlemen, the old car, technically, when you bet all the factors in mind, has won the fuel economy challenge and we've exposed the new car as the liar that it really is. And with that said, no more fuel efficiency challenges ever. I'm done. 
this journey has taken twice as long as it would have done if I'd just driven normally and not been feathering the throttle the whole time. This has been an incredibly boring drive, and as much as I hope you've enjoyed it, I hate it, so I'm done. No more fuel efficiency. I'm, in fact, no, forget it. I'm done. I'm out. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore.